Hello everyone, it's Adriana and I'm going to teach you today how I make my Cricut cake toppers. My cake toppers are really sturdy because they use poster board and glitter cardstock. I've streamlined this process so that I can get the Cricut to make my cake topper in less than 15 to 20 minutes. Once you save your own template to the Cricut design space, you can make your own custom cake toppers using my techniques. Let's talk about the paper first. So you're going to need some decorative or glitter cardstock. I bought mine off of Amazon. I will leave a link in the description below. You will also need some standard poster board. Go ahead and set those aside for now and head on over to your computer. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is open up Cricut Design Space. Then go ahead and insert some text. I'm just going to do a simple happy birthday and go ahead and move this up so you can see it a little better. Typically what you want to do whenever you make a cake topper is you want to pick a cursive font, number one, and number two, you want that font to be kind of bold. So even though a font might be cursive, it might be skinny, and that's going to be difficult for the Cricut to cut and for you to see when you put it on top of the cake. I get all of my custom fonts from Defont. This is a free resource that allows you to use fonts for personal use only. So for instance, this font right here would be a really excellent font for a cake topper because it has these thick regions and it's also cursive so we can connect them all together. I went ahead and downloaded a font so it's on my system and so when you open up this font here you go to system and the font that I'm going to use today is called Angelina. You can find it on the font. You download it, double click on it and it'll automatically install into your font library if you use a Mac operating system. So go ahead and use that one and we can resize this. Um, however we want when we weld this entire happy birthday together. So a good rule of thumb is when you make a cake topper, um, typically the size of the cake is how big I make the cake topper. So if I'm making a six, six inch round cake, I'll make the cake topper between six and seven inches. I'm going to make a cake topper for an eight inch cake. So I want my cake topper to be between eight to nine inches in length. And it depends on the font that you choose and the style that you design, but typically between three to four inches in height. Okay, so notice how all of the letters are separated. So to push them together so we get one cohesive cut, what you wanna do is ungroup. And what this does is separates each letter into its own individual object that you can size and rotate as you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and start attaching these. So we want them to be attached by their little tails. You can also kind of turn them to the side if you wanted more of like a kind of whimsical look. Um, I actually think that looks pretty cute. And whatever you have to do to get them all connected, because when it cuts, the more regions that they're connected, the easier it will be and the more sturdy it will be. But I'll also teach you how I make my cake toppers pretty sturdy. So for my happy birthday, I typically use two lines instead of one big old, you know, happy birthday. So you can tell right from here, this is going to be a little bit too small, but I will show you how to fix that. So let's go ahead and attach all these letters first. That looks good, but we're going to have to um, put this all together. So there are a couple options down at the bottom over here. We have an option where we have to select them all first. We have an option called weld and an option called attach. The one you want to use is called weld. If you use the attach, they will be one object that you can move all together, but it will be obvious during the cut step that that's not the correct um, option to choose because what attach means is that you're simply, it looks like, like, like you're paper clipping something together. So each individual letter is still its own object, its own entity. But if I weld them together like so, it's actually one entire cohesive object that's going to cut this entire phrase. Okay. So we can resize at this point. So if you are unhappy with the initial size, let's say, I wanted to do the eight inch cake topper and that would be good and we could just cut from here. But I like to add some elements, some hearts or stars or little things like that just to make it kind of special. I also like to add the name of the person whose birthday it is. So I often will keep 
a file that just has happy birthday like this and then I will add another text down here with the person's name so we'll do Nancy Nancy's actually my cousin and her birthday's coming up and so what I do to get the proper size I just kind of place it on top of the size of the initial happy birthday until it matches looks about right it's okay if the person's name's a little bigger I kind of want that to stand out anyways so same thing we're gonna ungroup now each letter is gonna be its own individual object and then usually I like to kind of place this over to the left a little more to offset the birthday all right so then I'll move this over to the side and you can add little elements so I go over here to shapes. I like to just use these regular shapes here. Again, you're gonna select the whole thing and weld it all together. Okay, so when you're happy with the size and the look of your cake topper, go over here to the screen button and click make it. And now it's gonna give us a preview of what the cuts will look like. We are only cutting one design, so it's pretty simple. The only thing is that we're using two different materials. So let's start with the first one, which is poster board. We're gonna cut two copies. So you just go over to two and push apply. And then you can kind of move these around um, based on the size of the paper. And I'm just gonna leave mine as is. Okay, then we have to just push continue. And then your computer is gonna connect to the Cricut either through Bluetooth or if you have it hardwired. Then you wanna set the material. So we're gonna do the poster board option first. So as you can see, I've already loaded in the mat. It's nice and tight up against this metal rod. And then I'm gonna select the thickest selection for poster board and I'm gonna load it in. Okay, so now that we see that the base material is set to poster board plus, the tools and materials are loaded. I haven't changed anything. It is the fine point blade. And we'll go ahead and push go on the Cricut. And then I always kind of like to ensure that the the cricket loads the mat properly and then you just let it go it looks really good so we'll just bring this over and detach it from the mat so we're gonna finish this cut and then I'm just gonna make it again. This time I'm gonna select a different material. So this one, we only wanna print one copy, so go to continue. Okay, once it's connected, we're gonna change the material from poster board over to the custom setting right here. So we're gonna move the dial to the custom. And then it's gonna allow you to select the material. So I favorited two materials that I typically use for my cake toppers, which are metallic poster board and glitter cardstock. I'm gonna use glitter cardstock today. And to favorite these materials, if you wanna use the same ones, all you have to do is go to browse all materials and type in glitter cardstock or anything with like glitter on it and um, it'll come up and to favorite it, you just push the star. So I'll go ahead and select that one and that will know at what pressure to cut. So everything's good with the fine point blade. So we'll go over here, load the mat and then push go. Okay, so by now you should have three cutouts, two from poster board and one from your glitter cardstock. Let's glue the two pieces of poster board together first, and I just use Almer's glue because it's non-toxic. So just take your glue and make little dots over the surface of the first cutout. Then take a paintbrush and brush the glue all over the surface of the cutout to create a really thin layer. Next, take your poster board cutout and place it right on top of the one that has glue on it. I find this is really easy to do if you just pick the whole thing up and then place the two layers on top of each other and kind of slide them around until everything matches. Place this between two sheets of clean paper. Then place your most expensive textbook on top of it so that it dries flat. Let that sit for about a minute before you move on to the next step. We're going to repeat this entire process and top off with the glitter cardstock. So go ahead and take your glue, make little dots everywhere, use a paintbrush to spread it around so it's really thin, then place your glitter cardstock on top. 
Place the cake topper between two sheets of clean paper again and place your textbook on top. As for the sticks that prop up your cake topper, you have a few options. I've used skewers, which work really well. A really good option if you're looking for a white stick is to use the lollipop sticks and they even have ones that have little designs on them. The ones that I'm going to use today and the ones that I use for my family are these plastic sticks. My sister is obsessed with sending us fruit bouquets, so I save those sticks that come with them and use them for the cake toppers. Because our cake toppers are made of multiple pieces of poster board, they're actually quite sturdy so you only need one stick. So just try to identify an area in your design where there's a straight line where you can apply some glue. So I just use my hot glue gun and then press the stick down really firmly and your cake topper should be ready to go. And here it is, the finished cake topper. Thanks for watching and happy baking!